All right. Well, I um, guess we'll get started. So good morning, afternoon or evening to everyone around the world who's joining us today for our January student meetup. And today we're going to be talking about the 2024 Berlin Conference. So um, here we're going to have a couple of folks who will be joining us today. We'll have a chance to answer some questions. Um, so make sure you stick around and you'll get to get some sneak previews of what the conference is like. You'll hear it here first. Um, and don't worry about like taking notes or anything. This is all going to be recorded for later and be posted um, with a link on the GAS website for you to share with your friends. All right, next slide, please. So first of all, introductions. So um, this meeting is hosted by your two student representatives. So my name is Leah. Um, I'm your North American student representative. And we also have Jocelyn here, who is your international rep. Mm -hmm. We also have a special guest today, Jennifer Hand, who is our conference guru for this year. So Jennifer's been uh, really busy planning all different aspects of the Berlin conference, and she's very excited to share some cool details with you. Next slide. Sorry, just a second. There we go. There we go. So um, before we really dive into it, we're just going to go through a couple of quick housekeeping and itinerary details. So um, for those of you who don't know, the GAS student meetups are free uh, virtual meetings held by your two student representatives. They'll actually be happening quarterly um, this next year. We'll be recording today's program and posting it on our YouTube channel for accessibility purposes. So anyone who is comfortable keeping their cameras on, please do. Um, if not, that is totally OK as well. We do ask that everyone uh, keep themselves on mute and turn off the microphone unless they're speaking. Um, we do have a raise hand function here in Google Meet here at the bottom. So you can let us know if you've got a burning question. Also feel free to use the chat box to write your questions. Um, for this presentation, we will have a dedicated question and answer period at the very end of the presentation. So we'll be responding to questions in a chat um, chronologically and ask that you save most of your questions for the end. Um, for attendees with shaky Wi-Fi, we do recommend closing any unused tabs um, on your device to improve the Google meeting quality. And in order to uphold our values of diversity and community and respect, we just ask that everyone be kind and respectful to our moderators, you know, guests and fellow attendees. Okay, so what will we be talking about today? Remember, again, everything will be recorded, so you can always come back to it later on our YouTube channel. So part one, we'll be talking about what is the Berlin Gas Conference for 2024? Um, what's it going to be like? What can you do there? Um, part two is going to be how do you actually get to the conference? We're going to talk a little bit about um, some gas scholarships, um, how to budget, what to bring, stuff like that. And then part three is going to be our question and answer period, um, and you can ask us anything. Okay, so part one, what is the 2024 Berlin Gas Conference? I'm going to let our wonderful conference guru, Jennifer, take it from here and give you a fantastic introduction to what this year is going to be all about. Thank you, Leah, and welcome, everybody, and welcome those viewing on YouTube later. Um, really excited for Berlin. This year is going to be a very special conference. We're going to be trying out a bunch of new formats for our programming. Um, but of course, we'll also have our tried and true favorites. So let's go first through first some of our highlighted conference activities. Um, so our little demo and lecture sneak peek. Um, we're going to have um, a lot of great lectures and demos this year. Here's some kind of visual examples. And then we can go through the names here. Okay, um, so in our hot and flame and neon shops, here are some highlights. Um, we're gonna have a big collaborative demonstration in both flame and hot techniques with Becky Feather and friends, um, Andre Novotny, uh, Ned Cantrell doing his famous um, in inflatable glass pieces, which are so whimsical and lovely, Jade Ford from the UK, Karen Newholm from Denmark, Mert Angor coming all the way from Turkey, Tatiana Boyarinova coming from Russia, 
And um, Victoria Am Amadiza de Melendez, who is an amazing neon vendor out of, I believe, Brooklyn, um, also doing a really cool neon demo for us. So those who will be kilning it, and I love that pun. Thank you for that, Leah, in the <laughs> presentation here. Um, so we'll have lots of amazing kiln brains um, on display. Um, so this is kind of, you know, kiln and cold um, and uh, experimental techniques, both uh, demos and lecmos. Marta Gibiete, Nate Ricudo, Aaron Peters, uh, Ricardo Hanaif, uh, Simon Kalantari, who you may know for that beautiful pot de verre technique that he's pushed in incredible directions. Um, I know a lot of people are very excited. Um, he's been, he tried to do a demo a few years ago. There was a visa issue. So we're really, really excited that we got him back this year. Um, Chu Chen Song, who's Enamel works on kiln formed glass are just breathtaking. And then Anthony Emoako Atta, who again, uh, screen printing, holy wow, um, what an amazing virtuoso with that medium. Really excited to be able to sneak into that one and pick up some techniques. Um, for colds and molds, um, this year, you know, the Glass Art Society, we are a big umbrella organization, we represent all glass artists. But I'm, I'm not going to lie, we do tend to favor the big, flashy, hot glass demos, right? Not this year. We are putting cold working front and center with an amazing group of international cold workers known as the Lathe Riders. Um, and that is actually uh, led by Lothar Bocher. Um, so they're going to be doing our conference kickoff demo. Um, this is cold working on a scale and intensity like you've never seen before. Um, so... There's all these techniques that come out of Czech, that come out of these, um, you know, regions of the world that are, are really prized in their ability to cut glass in very extreme um, and fascinating ways. So I'm really excited that we are putting um, cold working kind of on the map this year. Um, it's very fitting for the region of the world that we will be in as well. Um, Stelea Eoana, um, again, amazing uh, foot pedal driven um, cold working technique. Um, and then some really cool and informative demos from Brenda Page, Brian Gillespie, Helen Stokes, and Yara Sara. Again, another engraving virtuoso. So geeking out about glass. You know, it wouldn't be a gas conference without people talking about how to get money to make glass, right? So we'll have some um, grant writing workshops. Um, and right now, that is mostly U.S. focused. We have a, a dedicated workshop instructor who is just a U.S. focused grant writer. Um, but we are actively seeking um, somebody who is a European or internationally focused grant writer to come in and do kind of like a parallel workshop. So if you have any tips, let me know. Um, we'll be looking at perspectives of manual glassmaking in Europe, um, the Glass Virus, which is kind of a collaborative think tank group on how to push glass education into the 21st century. We'll be doing a panel as well as some breakout workshops. Um, pattern work of the American glass pipe movement. That's going to be a really fascinating lecture by Christopher McElroy. Uh, we're going to be talking about the situation for stained glass in the UK. Um, we will have the um, uh, amazing Philip Bandura do, is glass queer or is it just me? If you've ever been in a room with Philip, you know what a joy that is. And he's just going to bring a really wonderful and energetic presentation. Um, and then of course, uh, let's get techie and geeky. We'll have some CAD and glass integration information as well. Okay. So this year, there will be a lot of opportunities for networking. Some of these little kind of workshops and breakout sessions that I referred to will actually take place in a new two-hour midday networking block. So, you know, it's always, um, I don't know how many folks in here, I don't know if you hit the, hit the hand up button if you've been to a conference before. Just raise your hand if you've been to a conference. Okay, okay, so we have some veterans, that's great. Um, so for those of you who don't know, usually your your conference day is kind of like made up of like, oh man, there's all these great things that I wanna see. And by like, like five o'clock rolls around, you're like, I've been running around trying to see stuff all day and I haven't eaten, I haven't taken care of myself. Glasses can get cranky when we don't eat. So we're trying to forestall that this year by having a two hour block where we're like, okay, everyone pause, grab some food, and come and sit down someplace where you can like be a little bit more informal, be more conversations um, and some, like I said, just networking and kind of uh, more interactive programming that pairs well with a good German sausage. Um, so in addition to that midday programming, we will also have evening programming 
every night of the conference. So there will be opportunities to network, hang out, um, grab a cold German beer of, if you are of age, or grab a wonderful Spetsy, my favorite type of European soda, if you're a non-drinker like me, and just come and hang out. Um, so Wednesday, obviously, that will be the conference kickoff evening. Thursday, we're going to have a great glass trunk show, glass jewelry trunk show, as well as a film festival opening event. Um, Friday night, we'll have a big flame off party at Provenstrasse. And then Saturday night, we have a really fun surprise in store for everyone for what we're doing with the closing night party this year. So again, stay tuned. All right, let's see. Next slide. So Firestarter. Um, Firestarter is a really fun um, pre-conference event used to be called the pre-conference reception, but that was boring. So we changed it because really what it is, is it's a moment for everyone to come together and fuel their fire before the conference starts and also raise some money for GAS's programs, for our scholarships, for our outreach and all of that good stuff. So it is a fundraiser, um, but tickets this year are only $50. Last year, for example, that was a $150 ticket. Um, so we're really working to make it both more accessible um, and just kind of um, something that more people can come to. Um, and we are really excited for Firestarter this year. So go ahead and grab your ticket to that. Um, as a researcher, as somebody who was looking to connect with people in the Studio Glass movement, I bought a ticket to the pre-conference reception in Tacoma and found five different interview subjects who were really eager to talk to me because that is kind of where like a lot of different levels of our community, you know, the people who've been around for a really long time, um, they're the ones who often will show up to these kinds of events. So if you're like, looking to rub some elbows. It's a pretty good opportunity to do so. Um, and like I said, closing night party, details coming soon. We've got something really special in store, but we're not quite ready to announce that yet. Okay, um, gas market. This year we're going to have, um, like every year, our gas market that's gonna be in one of our main conference hubs. Um, and we will have the amazing goblet grab, so much fun. Um, and then silent auction this year is actually transitioning to that jewelry trunk show that I talked about just because of the logistics of trying to do um, silent auction in Germany. So jewelry trunk show, um, buy something for yourself, buy something for your mother, um, buy some glass jewelry for your dog. It's going to be great. Okay. Uh, student centric activities. Leah, I think you might be taking this one. Or Jocelyn? Yeah, um, actually, I think Jocelyn's going to be yeah. um, heading into some of our student centric activities, you know, things that Jocelyn and I highly recommend um, for emerging artists to come to as highlights. All right, so I'm going to talk about like student activities that are av available at the conference and activities that are um, specifically for students. Um, next slide, please. Um, so first of all, it's the guest student meetup. And the student meetup is a very good opportunity to meet some new friends, get connected with glass students from all around the world and kind of exchange information with each other. Um, the student meetup will be hosted by me and Leah as a casual get together during the conference. And there may be a prize or two for those who attend. Yay. <laughs> Next slide, please. OK. Um, and in every conference, there's always a portfolio review section where you can get your art portfolio reviewed by gallery owners, curators, educators, and artists. Um, each review section will last for around 20 to 25 minutes and a limited num number of slots will be available on a first come first serve basis to those who sign up online. And if necessary, a waiting list will be kept in case of cancellations. Um, we'll have a sign up sheet online very soon, so please stay tuned for it. And next is the Sex Emerging Artist Panel. The Sex Emerging Artist Award was established to recognize emerging talent in the glass community. And each year, GAS hosts a panel where free sex artists share their newest works with the public and students are highly uh, encouraged to attend. And finally, I'm going to talk about the student exhibition. So this year's student exhibition is named Evolution 2024, a showcase of emerging international talent. And it aims to showcase the unique perspective and emerging talent of student artists working primarily in glass. Next, next slide, please. Um, about the timeline of the application for exhibition, um, the, appl the application is already opened in November last year, and the deadline is in 10 days, I believe, which is January 19th. 
and students will be notified in February whether they could exhibit their work in the exhibition and the awards will be announced at the conference in May. And for the awards, the jury panel will evaluate all eligible students entries and select winners. And the awardees must be guest student members through May 31st, 2024. And previously more than uh, US dollar $500 in cash and supplies have been awarded to student winners. And gas also encourages the sale of artwork during the course of the exhibition. Um, artists may list work as not for sale. Otherwise, please in, uh, include sale price in US dollar, excluding any shipping costs in application. And gas will take a 30% commission of sale for this exhibition. And gas will not be responsible for any shipping of sold work. Um, buyer must pay and arrange for shipping of the sold work. As for the shipping of the artwork to the exhibition venue, shipping details will be provided to artists selected to participate in this exhibition. And submitting artists will be responsible for shipping costs to and from the exhibition location. And I believe next is Jen. I'm going to pass the time to Jen. So she's going to talk about, uh, introduce us to the city of Berlin. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Jocelyn. Um, just one point of clarification really quick about the exhibition, 5,000. Usually we have more than $5,000 in prizes. So let's add a zero onto that and get excited um, and definitely apply. Um, historically, we don't know what our prizes are this year. That's always, um, we're still seeking sponsors, but it's usually pretty good Pretty good winnings, so get excited for that. All right, welcome to Berlin. Welcome in auch Berlin. Okay, so this year we're going to have two conference hubs, and I'm actually going to jump over to um, boo -boo -boo, a Google map really quick just to orient you a little bit before I get into what our hubs are. I'm going to show you where they are. Um, so I'm going to share this tab instead. Here we go. I know I can't see what I'm doing, but okay, so Berlin. Um, pretty big city, but the good thing is it is connected very, very well by all sorts of public transportation. So these dots in the middle here, this is the conference hotel. Now the conference hotel is in the middle of Alexanderplatz. You can see this word here that, that says Mitte. Basically that's like city center, okay? Um, this is, it's very touristy area, which means there's like lots of great um, restaurants and stuff. It's very close to this museum incel, which is the museum island. There's literally an island dedicated to museums in Berlin. Seriously, I love this city. Um, so much fun, okay? So this is the um, Radisson Park in Alexanderplatz. If you've seen that on our selection of conference hotels, it is a great option. I've been there, it's super clean. Um, it's really, really accessible to the, the U-Bahn. So this is the hotel, this is the station right here, um, or one or the other, here we go, hotel, um, train station, there we go. Less than a five minute walk, very accessible. But honestly, if you're a student and you're looking to travel on the cheap, I would recommend staying um, at the Nina Hostel, which is um, right here, right by um, Berlin Glass. So um, to get from the conference hotel to our two conference hubs, which are here, this is our Provinzstrasse hub, and here, this is our Willem Holland hub, um, you'll be able to take the Berlin, U-Bahn, and S-Bahn, okay? Those are incredibly fast, incredibly clean and efficient trains. Um, you can see that, um, okay, there are stops all along the way, um, and we would be looking for Schoenholz and Willemsruhe, which are the two stops. This is the Provinzstrasse stop. This is the Willem Holland stop right here, okay? Um, okay, moving on back to this tab. All right, so I'm going to get a little bit closer here. Um, so when you're going to Provinzstrasse Hub, like I said, you would get off at this Schoenholt station, and then you'd walk to um, this campus right here. So Monopol Berlin is kind of the overarching name of what this campus used to be, but now it's broken up into Berlin Glass, Monopol, and Bard College. And then one stop away on the U-Bahn, is Willem Hollen, which is another big creative campus. Um, so we have Willem Hollen right here, and it's like 
not even a five minute walk from Wilhelmsruhe, which is that station. Okay, gonna go back to our lovely slideshow now. Okay, so now you know where those things are. What the heck are they, right? Um, so Conference Hub Willem Holland. Um, so it was an old iron foundry, um, really cool old Berlin brick architecture. Um, they, there's just a ton of space. So if anyone came to, to Detroit last year and was like super overwhelmed by how big all of the buildings at like the Russell Industrial Center were, just like massive warehouses, you know, artists can have this like crazy huge amount of studio space compared to anywhere else in the country, right? Same deal here. These old factories make for these huge lofted, really cool um, exhibition and conference spaces. So at Willem Holland Hall C, um, you will find registration, really good to know, right? Um, that's where you need to go pick up your conference pass. You'll find the gas market. That's where we're gonna have that super cool cold working conference kickoff. Um, we will have, <clears throat> excuse me, all of our exhibitions there. The film festival will be mostly playing at Willem Holland. That's gonna be where the film festival kicks off and where most of that programming happens. Um, we will have our green pavilion, uh, which is going to have some uh, green fur uh, sustainable furnaces, um, and information on how to work with glass in a more sustainable fashion. Um, and then our lectures and panels and a few LECMOs will be there as well as our cold demos. Okay, so Conference Hub Provenstrasse. Okay, so like I said, um, this used to be kind of like a big creative campus called Monopole, and now it's being broken up into a few different types of locations. But I'm gonna try to zoom in on this. Oh no, it's a slide, so I can't zoom in. Dang, uh, now I'm not where I wanna be. Okay, so I don't know how well you guys are gonna be able to see this, but we're gonna walk. So this is Provenstrasse where you would come in from catching the train or um, we will also have an accessibility shuttle for those who cannot navigate or really would have trouble navigating public transportation. Um, so you would come up out here, um, walk through Monopole and I hope you guys are being able to follow my arrow. Leah, can you see that? Jocelyn? Yes, no? Yeah. Cool. All right. So this here is going to be where our flame demonstrations happen and a glass on the go rodeo, which is going to be a bunch of super cool mobile furnaces. And then you'll come all the way around here to find Berlin glass. And then our LECMO room is going to be right here. There's also going to be a kids oasis back here that the Berlin glass staff is going to be running. Um, as a parent artist myself, I'm super excited. We're going to have some cool kids programming. So we're very, very lucky to have that. Okay, so Berlin Glass was the first public access glass studio in Berlin. Um, very exciting, run by our site committee chair, Nadania Idris, who's also currently the gas vice president. Um, it's a really great facility. They do all sorts of fun experimental stuff there. Um, lots of design work in the very design forward Berlin. Um, and of course there we will have hot glass demos, our hot glass performances, and that kids oasis that I just mentioned. Bard College is um, currently building their campus in Berlin, kind of right next door to Berlin Glass. And it's cool because if you don't know, Bard College has an incredible repository of uh, studio glass, American studio glass history. Um, and they're also offering hot glass classes. Um, and they have an amazing master's program. Um, so very, very cool um, education program. And they, have a building that they're letting us use for our flame and neon demonstrations. So thank you, Bard College. And then, like I said, Monopole is this old, like creative maker space, stu artist studio kind of campus. Um, and we have a couple of different spaces around that campus and green space where we will be doing our LECMOs, our glass on the go rodeo, and some kind of like fun outdoor roaming performances. Um, very excited for those. Okay. Berlin sightseeing. So, of course, go wander, explore the city on your own. But if you kind of want like a, a quick overview to orient you to where you are, I would highly recommend um, we're going to do a super fun Berlin big bus tour uh, Wednesday, May 15th. So chances are you'll already be in town. You might have flown in on the Tuesday night. This is an opportunity to do a half day tour um, on a big bus with all of your glassy friends. Um, that'll take you around to all of the best sites in Berlin. Um, you know, you'll get to see the Berlin Wall, the, the East Side Gallery, uh, Museum Island, the Brandenburg Gate featured here, all these really cool spots. Um, and it'll have you back in time to pick up your registration and get to the conference kickoff. So 
Um, it's a way to kind of squeeze that in and orient yourself to the city before the conference starts. Um, and these big bus tours, they are fully wheelchair accessible um, on the ground floor. And then if weather is good, which we're hoping, um, they'll be able to open up the top of the bus. And so you'll be out in the sunshine seeing the city. Um, again, that is uh, Wednesday, May 15th um, from around 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And um, you can purchase those tickets on the GAS website along with your registration. Next slide. Oh, there we go. So um, GAS is committed to making the conference as accessible as possible for folks of all abilities. Um, and so we do have an accessibility guide on the website. So please take a look at that. Like I said, um, public transportation is plentifully available, super efficient, super affordable, and it is also fully accessible. As somebody who was wheeling around my very pregnant self with a suitcase that I couldn't lift in Berlin, I was like, okay, I have to use the elevators. I can't use the escalator. How do I do this? It was a real wake up, but I found that it was um, every single uh, train station has an elevator, has ways for you to be able to navigate that. However, we also will have an accessibility shuttle um, that will pick people up at the conference hotel. Um, and if we get enough requests also at the conference hostel that I mentioned, um, and that will take you from those spots to the uh, two conference hubs and kind of continue doing a loop. Now, we are asking if anyone is hoping to utilize that service that you just let us know. Um, and on that accessibility page, there's a form to fill out um, because we want to make sure that we are able to anticipate need um, and anticipate where the people who need that service will be staying so we can do our best to manage those logistics. Okay, part two, getting to the conference. Who's on deck? Uh, I believe yep. this is Jocelyn. So yep. how do you actually get to the conference? And we'll walk you through kind of like step-by-step step, um, how to get your tickets. Okay, so next slide, please. Um, we all know that as a student, we all struggle a lot financially. And I'm going to talk about like tips on how students can save on your trip to the conference to Berlin. Next slide, please. Um, first of all, it's the early bird guest tickets. And it's a member only four day conference passes available until 12th of January at 11.59 p.m. Pacific time or while supplies last. And the ticket includes a digital guest journal and a closing night party ticket. And the price for early bird uh, ticket for student members is uh, 191 US dollars, and while the regular price is uh, $212. Next slide. Um, students can also consider to apply for the guest work exchange, which is a member only four day conference passes that require a 12 hour work shift, and it is available until uh, February 11 at 11.59 PM Pacific time or while supplies last. And GAS needs around uh, 50 to 100 people during the conference for support every year. And participating in this way can enrich your conference experience and save your money. Um, work exchange participants must commit 12 hours to conference assistance in exchange for a discounted conference pass. And they also must attend one of the two one hour online training sessions held in advance of the conference. One of one of the one of them is on March 27th at 9 a.m. Eastern time, and then another one is on March 30th at 5 p.m. Eastern time. And once you have registered, in indicate your work availability or and preferences. And after the work exchange deadline has passed, um, some of the guest staff will follow up with a link to attend the training sessions. And the price for um, the work exchange for student member is uh, $64, while the regular is $116. And I'm going to talk about the guest student scholarships you can apply for as well. Um, first is the Taka Takako Sano Scholarship, and it's a scholarship for students and non-students living outside of the conference country, which is Germany in this case. Um, Awards are given in uh, US dollars in the amount of $1,000. And the second one is uh, Becky Winship Flameworking Scholarships. And this scholarship is given to eligible students who, uh, who work with uh, flameworking techniques. 
and they are given in uh, US dollars in the amount of $1,000 as well. Next slide. Yep. Um, and the Addy and Angela Bar Barnett scholarship is intended for emerging artists and those who require financial assistance to attend the annual gas conference and free awards in the amount of 500 each are given. And last one is the iconic Yonix scholarship, which is new this year. And it is funded by the Glass Collective Iconic Yonix sale of work from their Detroit 2023 presentation. And this scholarship is intended for a female identifying glass artist to attend the annual gas conference. And all the scholarships that I mentioned are meant to assist with uh, conference admission, travel, and lodging costs. Next slide, please. And everything that I have mentioned are all in the uh, ways to save section on our guest website. So do check it out if you would like to apply for early bird passes or exchange or scholarships. Um, so now I'm going to pass the time to Leah, I believe, to talk yeah. about budgeting the whole trip. So yeah, this can be the most intimidating part about putting together a travel plan. Um, but actually, once you get started, um, I personally find it kind of fun to watch, um, you know, like all these things start to come together, you know, start planning with friends, picking out places to stay, you know, what to eat and stuff like that. So um, I'm going to lead you through kind of like my personal conference planning as an example and show you a couple tips about like making sure that you feel ready to go to Berlin and also, you know, where to get additional funding um, after you've applied to gas scholarships, because we all love to travel on someone else's money. Next slide, please. So let's talk first about hotels and travel. Um, Jennifer already mentioned that we have two main areas where um, gas, uh, most people are going to be staying at the Park Inn by Radisson, which is the conference hotel, and then at the hostel. So just we are recommending these two. You can stay um, anywhere you would like, um, but we have, I believe, special discounts, um, Jennifer, at these two particular places. Um, with gas. So that's just something to keep in mind. And it's looking pretty good. So the park in by Radisson uh, rates starting at 119 euros a night, depending on dates and occupancy. Um, and I know that it says rooms guaranteed until December 1st, but there, I believe there's still a couple um, left. So make sure you check that out. If you're on more of a budget, you definitely want to consider the hostel. Um, so it's starting at $35 uh, a night for a bed in a shared room. Uh, hostels are often like super fun, really engaging. If you're feeling a little nervous about it, see if you can go with a friend. Um, I went to last year's Detroit conference with a buddy of mine. We split a room. It was a really great idea for our bank accounts and also for, you know, just getting around the conference. Jennifer. Thanks, Leah. I just wanted to interject really quickly to say as well, we are setting up a Discord channel so that people can find glassy roommates um, to stay at the Nina Hostel with. So um, definitely watch the gas channels for that. Um, I think that's supposed to go live in the next week or so, um, so that there'll be a discussion platform. Um, I know I've seen a lot of conversations like on Facebook um, with people Carrie Strope is a, is a presenter and artist who's like organizing some rooms for folks in the hostel. Um, but yeah, I can speak from experience. This place is lovely, gorgeous, great breakfast um, and walking distance to Berlin Glass. Whereas again, it's a 20 minute U-Bahn ride from the conference hotel. Um, and there's also a couple of really great, um, more budget friendly hotels that are walking distance from Berlin Glass. So definitely check those out too. Um, and always, if you have questions, just shoot me an email, jennifer at glassart.org, and I'm happy to point you in the right direction if you're still looking for the right accommodations for you. Mm -hmm. And it's also interesting to note that the when you go to the partner hotel that we have, it actually includes your breakfast. And at the hostel that we um, are recommending, you can also add on breakfast. So that's just me, but I love that. <laughs> I think that's a cute little thing. Um, next slide, please. So um, actually building a travel budget. This is a screen cap of actually what my budget um, looked like for a grant that I was applying for. Um, and now this may look different from everyone, but when building a budget and trying to figure out what I might end up spending, I really like working with Excel or working with like a table-based um, 
system just because it allows me to really like write things out and for this context um for the grant i was applying for there's particular um different categories that i had to put expenses in so i mean that may come in handy for you if you choose to kind of think about it that way like what is a travel expense what is a course fee um what is a per diem things like that or you can choose to do it another way but generally i was really considering you know like what's my round trip going to be like i'm coming from calgary canada alberta so that's like halfway across the world um i gotta consider you know that round trip um i am staying a little bit longer than the conference um just so that i can explore so think about you know the day that you want to touch down the day that you would like to um depart as well if you're coming from like north america um you might want to consider things like jet lag which i was really worried about so um if you know, that extra like half day, full day uh, might not be a terrible idea if you can afford it in order to just get, you know, your body used to Berlin time. Um, so flight's definitely the biggest thing. If you are coming from, you know, closer to Germany, there's also options for trains, which is fantastic. Um, you want to consider, you know, your conference pass. So whether you choose a work study um, or a full pass, um, you definitely want to make sure you put that in. Um, all the prices right now for the gas conference on the website are listed in USD dollars unless otherwise noted. Um, so make sure you use, you know, correct um, currency exchange. And you can just find that on like Google um, to make sure you get an estimate for that. So for me as a Canadian, everything that I put in my budgeted amount table is actually in Canadian, although I do put the US um, original price in. Um, you know, going to the networking night on May 14th, I really, really want to do that. Highly recommend you guys too, because um, it really is a fun time. Um, calculating per diem, which is basically like meals and incidental for the days that I was there, that can get a little bit tricky. Some countries, um, have standards you know when traveling abroad for you know how much do you think that um you should be able to like put in for a day i would recommend searching online doing a bit of research berlin is not too expensive of a city to go you know like get a nice meal you know get a good drink um but that's something you definitely want to consider especially if you have like dietary restrictions or something special so make sure you plan ahead um travel conference conference uh hotel accommodations. So as I mentioned before, if you're able to split a room or go to the hostel, that's really ideal, especially if you're on a budget. And just making sure that, you know, if you have a buddy that you both research the prices, decide on that together so there's like no surprises and know how to like pay each other back because that can get tricky with like a large group of friends done that in the past. Um, if you're doing Airbnb, like pre-conference, post-conference, during the conference, again, just make sure that you um, are researching those prices because um, they do fluctuate um, as you like book them within the next couple of months. Um, and also consider like the refund policy on all of like these Airbnbs and stuff, just in case, you know, like sometimes plans change, your flight's late, um, something like that. Um, I also really want to go to the museum island in Berlin. So I totally put in like admission for that. And that's something like if you're building a budget to get money for, that's totally something you can actually put in um, as part of your learning and experience for sure. And just because I'm planning to stay personally in Berlin for most of the month, I'm actually going to choose to get a monthly bus pass. You can also get a daily and like kind of like a regular like day pass um ride for it but for me like calculating the days out it was actually a lot cheaper for me to get the monthly so depending on how long you want to stay in berlin um consider your transportation costs for going on transit i'm not sure if anyone's coming by car that might get tricky um but also bikes are totally an option in berlin as well and i'll talk about that later so um in terms of like revenue and stuff so this is what i was actually asking for um you know uh, for me, like I want to put in an artist contribution, you know, my own savings, hopefully, um, in there. And then I was actually requesting quite a bit from this particular grant, which was over four grand. Um, so, and you'll notice here that the the total numbers end up um, evening out, which was particular for my grant. Not all grants require that, um, but it's really nice just to see it visually laid out in front of you. I know it can make me nervous because I feel like I'm slightly broke, but at the same time, it's way better to know these numbers as much as possible 
in advance rather than, you know, like go haphazard into Berlin and suddenly your credit card is full of these purchases um, at the end of the day. Next slide, please. So um, yeah, as I mentioned before, best way to travel is with someone else's money. Um, as a student, you got some great funding opportunities to get to Berlin. We already talked about some of these fantastic gas student scholarships, which you absolutely should go for, because um, we got a lot of them, and we want to give them out and have you guys use them. Um, most post-secondaries also tend to have a lot of travel and experience scholarships for educational trips. If you are in school right now, be sure to check with your school um, and make sure that you're not missing any of those opportunities. Local arts organizations on the municipal, the state, provincial, and federal level often have great opportunities as well. Again, I can only speak from a Canadian and North American experience here, um, but oftentimes if you look at, you know, like arts and culture um, grants for a lot of uh, countries, you'll find quite a few that you might be able to apply for. And another great option is if you and your friends or your classmates really want to go to Berlin, you guys can totally work together. Um, there's totally nothing wrong with making a whole bunch of pumpkins or Christmas ornaments or, I guess, friendship balls, as they call it now this time of year, um, or cute little things to, you know, work together, to sell, to share costs. Um, it's a really great way, especially if you have a buddy that you know personally who can help you out and, you know, watch each other's backs, like, financially to make sure you guys are hitting your savings goals. Um, for making Berlin happen. Next slide. Um, in terms of what's a safer travel grant, if you're going to go for a grant or scholarship, um, they are different from around the world, but the majority of them really want to see how an experience affects you and benefits you in the future. So when you're doing a written portion, you really want to mention, you know, why you should go um, to Berlin. So here's a couple examples. So like a weak statement might be, I just want to go to Berlin to learn more about glass versus a stronger statement that you might be able to write is I would like to do X that will result in Y and will have a lasting impact on my career Z. So like whatever you fit in there. So the X plus Y equals Z um, formula is often a great place to start if you're not sure like where to start in terms of writing a grant because you're talking about what you want to do, why, and what effect it will have on your practice, which is what most people want to hear about. Next slide. A couple more examples that I just throwing out there to get those brain juices going um, as example statements. You know, I would like to travel to the Ga Glass Art Society 2024 conference in Berlin, Germany to attend, you know, maybe insert a specific demo, a lecture, an experience, someone you really want to see or something you really want to learn in there um, and really hone in on that and why you can't have that experience elsewhere. For example, like all these great cold working folks that we have this year, you're not going to be able to find this huge collection of amazing cold workers pretty much at any other big event um, that you could regularly attend. So that's a huge reason if you're interested in that to come to the conference and that's what a grant wants to hear about. Um, another example statement is this experience will help me advance my skills as a glass artist because, you know, insert your reasoning there again, whether it's a technical skill, um, whether it's, you know, networking, something professional, whether you want to pursue like a master's or additional residencies and want to get connected with the folks behind that, whatever that means. And then to, you know, add a bit of icing on top of that cake, you know, you can talk about how you intend to build on the experience when you come, you know, back to your um, home by, you know, pursuing a new project, learning new skill, you know, preparing for another grant, for another travel opportunity. Um, so again, it's the X plus Y plus Z reasoning. Uh, remember that lectures, demos, networking events, purchasing tools, and experiencing the general culture of Berlin, these are all great reasons to mention um, in a grant. Next slide. So um, my final tips for granting uh, include a detailed budget and schedule um, to show that you're organized. A lot of grants will already require this, but it's also just great for your own knowledge. Um, keep in mind some grants require your expenses and revenue to equal zero because apparently extra money is not a good thing even though I argue that on a personal level. So just make sure that you have all your ducks in a row um, and even if you don't get the grant it's great to have that budget and that schedule ready to go for when you go to Berlin anyways. Um, if you do get a grant make sure you bring your phone with you to take lots of photos and videos for documentation. It's going to be great for your own social media but it's also really good to you know show the grant 
um, organization, you know, hey, this is what I did with the money. I had a great time. I learned a lot. Um, and a lot of um, grants will require that as part of your debrief. Um, also, ask for help. Anyone on the gas team um, is happy to help you. If you have questions about Berlin, if you have questions about like upcoming lectures and demos, accessibility, if you need like someone in gas to, you know, give you a travel letter or some kind of receipt um, for, you know, a ticket or something just as a reference for like a budget, feel free to contact the gas team. We're absolutely here to help. And we really want to help you guys get to the conference this year. Next slide. All right. And the last little bit we're going to talk about is um, some tips for Berlining. Um, these came um, mostly from Nadania, who is our vice president. Um, she's also the president of Berlin Glass and our committee chair for the conference location. Um, so that's Nadania right there with her brand new furnace. She is absolutely amazing. And as a, Ber as a Berlin um, native, she uh, was really happy to help us put together a couple of things for those of us who have never been to the city before. So what's a pack for Berlin? So temperatures in Berlin for May usually range between 9 to 19 degrees Celsius. Um, for those of you in America, that's 48 to 66 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, we recommend comfy walking shoes, uh, clothes that you can really layer and take off depending on the weather, um, a light jacket for some rain and chill, um, if you can squeeze in one of those foldable travel umbrellas, that's not a bad idea. It might get a little rainy. Um, your various toiletries, especially if you're coming to Firestarter, like a set of nice clothes for networking or even just, you know, for the aesthetic. Um, a comfy day bag is not a bad idea since you, you'll mostly be traveling around by public transit and by walking. Um, any medications and medical notes, you know, as needed and applicable to your situation. A camera or phone for photos, for sure. Um, a portable charger, again, always a great idea when you're traveling. Um, remember that EU countries use different outlets than those found elsewhere in the world. Um, so be sure to grab your adapters and find the right one before you leave, um, or else you might not be able to charge. And it, depending on how long you're staying in the country, make sure you double check your phone plan. Um, if you're staying there for a while, see if you can actually get a local SIM card because that'll actually save you money. Make sure you bring your passport and your wallet. Um, and of course, a copy of your gas conference schedule guide and your ticket, which you can pick up at registration. So be sure to go to registration first thing once you settle down um, to grab all that stuff so you know exactly where to go and when things are happening. Um, also think ahead about buying tools or materials or getting prizes. Um, the gas market is a fantastic place where you can get all kinds of great tools at um, great prices for your practice. And if you can manage to squeeze them in your luggage on the way home, you get to save on shipping costs, which is a bonus. Um, so if you are planning to come and do a bit of a shopping spree, make sure that you're uh, you consider your train or airline weight restrictions for luggage and leave extra room for purchases on the way home. I like to leave, you know, ideally five to uh, 10 pounds of extra um, uh, room in weight in my travel luggage, just in case, because I know I always inevitably buy something. Um, remember to keep all your receipts and for purchases when you return home. That includes your tools, that includes your hotel, that includes your food. Um, if you you know, run a small business, if you're like a student in some countries, you can write those off absolutely as expenses during tax time, but they are also really good to have in case you, know, you go um, across a border and someone's asking you, hey, what did you do? Can you show me you know, like some evidence of that? So be sure to keep all those receipts in a safe place as you go around Berlin. Um, and if you did um, end up buying too much, whether it is souvenirs or tools, or you come home with um, a prize of some sort that you weren't planning to, but you really like it, um, you can always ship your new goodies home. And that might end up being better than um, just sticking it in your luggage, especially if what you bought was a delicate piece of glass. Um, so in terms of best budget neighborhoods, here are some other options for you. Jennifer, I'm going to have to help you help me. Um, I have no clue. Rang Wrangle ties? I am bad at German. <laughs> <laughs> um, something like that. It's uh, it's farther away from our main conference locations and the hostel, but it's not that complicated to get there. And there's lots of really diverse restaurants that are affordable for students. So if you are looking for an Airbnb or alternate accommodations, this is one of those neighborhoods that Nadania recommends. Another one is um, 
a district called Wedding, which is really cool. So it's uh, closer to the Nina Hostel um, and our main conference hub. And it definitely has all kinds of places to eat um, that are pretty affordable. So again, if you're thinking about um, another kind of accommodation or looking to you know expand and explore a little bit, these, this is another one that uh, we recommend. Um, and also you can hang out at the Spotties. Um, these are mom and pop shops and they often have tables and benches outside where you can sit and drink beer, chill with your friends during off times. Um, in Germany, apparently it's uh, perfectly legal to drink in public and you can take your beer on the subway, which is pretty cool for all of our friends who do um, decide to drink for Berlin. Um, just for folks to know, the legal age for wine and beer is 16 and the legal age for hard liquor is 18. So. Again, just uh, for those of you from other countries who have various different um, legal drinking ages, just keep that um, in mind. And even if you're not drinking, there's tons of great um, non-alcoholic options at these shops as well. So you won't ever feel like left out at all when you go um, with a bunch of friends. Um, and then, as mentioned before, Nadani recommends that if you're staying for a while, um, even just for 10 days, it's really a great opportunity to get a bike, actually, because Berlin is such a great um, bike-friendly, pedestrian-friendly city. Um, and there's a lot of secondhand shops that actually sell them. You can resell it on your way out of town, which is a really hot tip. Um, and then you can also write um, rent uh, bikes and scooters. I believe they also have electric versions as well on the street too. So, you know, if you're not really feeling like the public transit or you just want to like take a different view of the city, um, that's definitely a chance for you to, you know, get some exercise, breathe in some fresh air and uh, see Berlin from a new angle. All right, and that's pretty much it um, for our presentation today. We're going to end off with a open Q&A period. So, you know, any questions that you have about the conference, about Berlin, about how to get there, um, we're going to open the floor. So um, if you want, you know, raise your hand, speak up, use the chat box if you feel more comfortable. Um, we're going to be here for the next uh, little while to talk about pretty much anything conference related. And I'm also throwing those links into the chat here. So the first one is the Berlin Google map, and the second one is the Berlin, <clears throat> excuse me, public transportation map, so that you can um, go ahead and click on those. Um, and of course, for those of you watching later, these will be down in the description as well. Um, these are all also available on the GAS website, um, but these are great ways to kind of um, check out. And I'll pull those links for those neighborhoods and put them in here as well. No questions, folks? Come on. <laughs> we didn't do that good, did we? Did yeah. we talk a lot of it? <laughs> well, Pauline, all right. Oh, I, I want to toss in one thing. Um, Leia talked about, um, Leia talked about, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, jet lag. Um, and I just want to point out that Berlin has an amazing spa culture for very, very cheap. So if you come and you, especially I had a morning flight and I was super, super jet lagged. So I just dragged my bags um, to my hotel and then left for um, a day spa. And that sounds super bougie, but in Berlin, like people believe that day spas are a right, not a privilege. So it's very cheap. You go, you can go soak in a jacuzzi, um, you know, do these like plunge pools and there's like beautiful places to like lay down in um, like a dark room and just like hear flowing water near you. And it's very, very lovely and a great way to work through your jet lag. Um, so definitely Google like best spas in Berlin and depending on where you're staying, find one in your neighborhood. They're all over the place. They're very affordable. They are magical for your body. So highly recommend. Um, and we do have a question it looks like. Hello. Hi Val. Uh, apparently I can't use chat box so uh, I'm a slow talker. So I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, well, I need uh, contact information actually because um, I I have some uh, questions about uh, some uh, my visa. Oh. I attend. I'm attending from Turkey, and it's really hard to get visa. Mm -hmm. So uh, may I, uh, have any I don't know email or something. 
because I have a long and delicate question. There it is. Thank that's you. That's my email. Just reach out to me and I will um, either answer your question or figure out who can. Thank you. Very welcome. Oh yeah, that's probably something to mention. Visas. Um, countries have different rules. Um, depends completely on how long you're staying, but if you do plan to stay for you know, longer than just a conference. Um, just double check again with your home country's um, visa and passport requirements just to make sure, you know, everything's above board. Um, yeah, actually, that's a good call. <laughs> yeah, and I write a lot of entry letters for our presenters, but I'm also very happy to write them for students and or just guest members. So not a problem whatsoever. Uh, actually, I do have a quick question. Um, for the portfolio reviews that we mentioned before, um, those don't cost anything extra. That comes with your conference pass, right? Correct. Yeah, okay. you do Sorry. have a conference pass to sign up um, for a portfolio review slot, but that is a free benefit that we offer to our attendees. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. So we'll be definitely watching for that um, sign up sheet opening on the GAS website because it's we always have a great number of people that come to do the portfolio reviews um and it's just so cool to be able to get your work seen by these professionals it really is and that will be on friday morning um since we have four more minutes and we don't have any other questions right now unless i see a hand pop up i can actually go ahead and do a quick sneak peek of our schedule hold on let me pull up um now this is subject to change but kind of a fun little sneak peek for those of you um, making the effort to come out and check out this meetup um so this is the wednesday you can see we'll have our conference kickoff our lathe writers demo um which will also be um there'll also be a, a performance happening kind of in the middle of that um first timers meetup that's also going to be on wednesday that is different from the student meetup um but the first timers meetup is a way to kind of like buddy up for someone who has not been to a conference before. That can be super fun. Um, Thursday, um, we'll have, you know, um, like you can see here, this is our midday gap. You see this nice big gap in between our programs. <clears throat> so we'll have um, our hot demos, our flame and neon demos and lecmos. Um, this whole area is province Strasse hub. So purple um, and orange are our province Strasse coding colors and anything green here you can see that's all at willem holland's you can see a lot going on at willem holland um so our uh one of our keynote lectures our littleton lecture sylvia levinson super excited for that one um and then our interactive programming first day of our interactive programming is themed around education second day of our interactive programming here is uh focused around career and small small business development um, again, Friday, that's night that we'll have that fun flame off at um, Monopole Province Strasse. And then Saturday night, <coughs> excuse me, our interactive programming is themed around self care and wellness. Um, and so throughout, you're seeing, you know, our demos, our lectures, gas market um, is open pretty much nine to five every day, except for Saturday when it closes a little bit early. And for those of you who maybe forgot or um, have struggles with your international chargers we will also have a charging lounge at willem holland so never fear gas got your back any other questions before we wrap i've also noticed that in the schedule um because they're the locations are a little bit <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> are a little bit spread out um that you did leave a bit of a gap between some of the events so that can factor in travel time because um like what is the approximate time to travel by train from um, like, for example, the conference hotel to Berlin Glass, was that like 15, 20-ish mm. minutes? If you're coming <clears throat> if you're coming from the conference hotel to get to either of the hubs, it's about 20 minutes. So again, the conference hotel, there's nothing program programmatic happening at the conference hotel. Um, and um, that it is about a 20-minute transit ride minimum um, to get to Berlin Glass and then another about five minutes um, to get to Willem Holland. Um, but bouncing back and forth between the Province Strasse hub and the Willem Holland hub, um, the longest part of that is like the less than five minute walk in each case from the train station to the actual um, conference hub. Um, 
the trains run insanely fast and regularly. It's like you're you're waiting less than five minutes for a train. Um, and again, it's one stop apart. So it's like a minute long train ride. Um, so very, very easy to get back and forth between those two hubs. Um, and then again, if you're looking to stay a little bit closer um, to either of the hubs, I have other hotel recommendations. Um, there's actually a really great, <clears throat> excuse me, um, budget hotel that's really close to the province Strasse hub. Um, but, you know, also there are benefits to staying at the conference hotel because that's where you're going to find the rowdy crew in the bar um, after the day is done. So um, you have options. Um, it's completely up to you. But uh, just reach out if you kind of want a little bit more info on where to stay and why. Yeah. And uh, we'll be planning to host this uh, recording on the gas YouTube channel. We'll send out um, some information. So don't worry, like if you're like, oh, my gosh, like, what was that neighborhood called again? <laughs> or like, what's what am I supposed to pack and stuff? Um, we'll definitely have that up. Um, so you can rewatch it anytime. Make sure if you've got friends, you know, who are coming to the conference or are interested, um, send them this link as well for them to watch. Um, and there's lots of great resources in here. But thank you all for joining us live um, today. We really appreciate you guys uh, coming out and learning more about what we've got in store for you this May. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Send me your questions before February 28th when I go on maternity leave. Um, otherwise, you're going to be waiting a long time for an answer. <laughs> Take care and see you all in Berlin. Bye. 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 Bye.